Hello, are you looking for some help on how to enter products into your BigCommerce store? I'm gonna show you in this video two different ways to do it. Before we get started, my name is Kel. I'm a developer, I'm a store owner, and I run the e-commerce growth Facebook community for people just like you and me. Um, I put out new e-commerce videos like this on YouTube every single week. So if you find this one useful, subscribe and hit the bell so that you can see more. All right, so let me jump over to my screen share and I'm gonna show you two different ways how to do this. So first way I'm gonna show you is the manual way. So to do that, you log into your BigCommerce store, which you can do at login.bigcommerce.com. If you don't have a store, click the link below the video and you can use that to set up a trial. Now, once you get logged in, you're gonna see a menu like this and we're gonna to go to products and then you'll see all of your existing products here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click add and we're gonna do one fully manually. So that takes you to a screen that looks like this. Now, it should look like this if you are on a newer store. If you uh, have a display that's different than this, before they had this user interface, they had a different one that had tabs across the top. It's still really the same process. It's just a little bit different format. But chances are you see a, a, a a uh, user interface that looks just like this and we're going to start out by typing in the product name right here in the product name field now it gives a little little tiny red star for the fields that are mandatory so you don't have to fill in everything i'm just going to fill in the the bare minimum so i'm going to skip skew i'm going to leave it here on physical and you would always do physical unless it's a digital download so just leave that where it is you, you do have to have a, a price put in here uh, you don't have to have a brand. You do have to have a weight. So I'm going to just say it's one pound. You do have to have a category that it's going to go into. Now you're going to want a description, but you don't have to have that to put it in right now. So you can always come back and do that later. You don't have to have an image, but um, you really have to have an image. I mean, you don't technically have to do it. I'm going to just take an image here. Um, I recommend using Canva to do your image editing. If you're new, it's free. They have a paid version that's even nicer uh, for just a couple bucks a month. But you know, you want to come in here, make a you know, make an image that's a thousand by a thousand or two thousand by two thousand would probably be a little bit better even. And I'm going to just download this real quick and we're going to install this as the image. So downloaded that. I'm going to come back to my big commerce tab and I'm just going to drag that image right in here and it uploaded it just like that. Um, I think that's all we have to have in order to, in order to put this product in at a minimum. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click save. You can say, you can see that it says the product saved successfully. You can click on this little link right here to open it up on the storefront, which will show you, basically the uh, the view that your customer would see of this product right now. So if we're looking at this, we can see it's got a picture, it's got a zoom turned on, it's got a product title, it's got a price, you could add it to cart, and it doesn't have much else. So we've met the minimums, but you're probably gonna want to come in here and, and fill in a ton more detail. So if it had a brand, you know, put in a brand uh, here, if it's in multiple categories, put in multiple categories. Type in your description here. You can add multiple images. So I think I can drag this image in a second time and a third time even. So this is just kind of simulating what, what, what it would be like if we had three images. You can select one of them to be your thumbnail and uh, you can even change the, uh, the order that they're in just like this, which is pretty nice. Now, the reason that there's an order and a thumbnail the order shows the way in which it shows up on the front end screen. So the first main image here is image number one. And the additional images that are down here, if I say, if I click save on the back end, I guess, let me just click save on the back end. And if I go back to the front end and refresh, you'll see now it's got three different images, even though I loaded the same one each time. So this is image number one, this is image number two, this is image number three. So those are gonna match the order in which I put them in here. But what does this thumbnail thing do? What it does is it determines which thumbnail you want to use on site-wide pages, like your category pages. 
then the reason that this is pretty cool is that you can have like maybe you have a let me just make another th another uh, image here let's say you have an image like this that you want to be uh, representative on your category page actually let me show let me sit let me okay let me do this one this one this one i think is a little bit better example so we're going to pretend like this is like the image that we want to show on category pages but we don't want to show that image first on the product page so i'm going to just save that i'm going to go back to here and i'm going to upload this as the last image i'm going to get rid of this one now i'm going to make that one the thumbnail but i'm going to leave it in third position so when i click save and come back here to the front end you can see that this one is still the main image and that this one is available here if I want to click over to see it. But if I clicked into my category, then you would see that that image, which was the third image, is actually the image that's representative of it on category pages. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there's a lot of times when you want to have an image like this that is not a lifestyle image and you want all of your images to look kind of consistently styled on the category page, but maybe you want a lifestyle image to be the first thing that they see when they come to the to the product page. Well, that's what that does right there. Um, coming down here to additional tabs here, you can load videos here. You can also use an embed link from YouTube and put a video in the description instead of using the video module. And I have a lot of customers do that. You can put additional information in here, like your SKU, your UPC, your bin picking number, which is like for your warehouse, uh, MPN numbers. You can have additional pricing here. So you can put in your cost pricing. Maybe you want to say this is $50 MSRP. It's $20 as the default price, but right now it's on sale for $16. So you can do all that. You can use bulk pricing here by saying that, you know, if they buy more than say 10, that they get, you know, $2 off or I'm sorry, this would make it a fixed amount. You could say dollars off per unit to say $2 off, just like that. Or a percentage off to say you get 5% off, just like that, which would make it 15, 20. All right, you can turn on inventory right here and say that I want to track inventory on a product level. And right now I have 50 units. And this is just so you can be notified if you're running low so that you know to place an order. You can say notify me when there's 10 or fewer. Um, but this would be how you track stock. Now, if you end up having variants on here, which I'm going to show you here in a second, then this would be to turn on uh, inventory tracking on the variant level. I'm going to just turn this off for right now. Now, here's where we get into um, where people get a little bit confused, which is putting in variants and customizations. So a good example of a variant, if I click to add a variant, would be to say I have three different sizes and I want to make these rectangle choices and give people the i you know the small medium and large choices right and i'm going to click save variants and come back and you can see that it automatically assigned a skew to each one of these and it automatically is saying that they're all 20 bucks well you can easily come in here and say okay maybe this one is 20 bucks and this one's 20 bucks but the large one costs you a little bit more because it's more cloth so you can really track uh, you know different pricing very easily against different uh, variations now coming back up here to the inventory this is where this on a variant level comes in play so if i click track inventory and then on a variant level now it added a stock column to here where i can say this one has 50 this one has 50 this one i have 40 in stock so now i have three different variations if i click save and I came back here. Now you can see small, medium, and large all show up. And if I hit the large one, you can see that it changes the price to 22 bucks, just like that. You can see it also turned on this buy in bulk and save. That's because I put in some rules that say if you get 10 or more, you get 5% off. And that's automatically going to apply. So if I get if I add 10 here then that would be $222, except when I click add, add to cart, 
it's going to show up here and be a little bit cheaper because it reflects that discount, the bulk discount. All right, going back here. So that's variance. And um, I'm going to just take those out to keep it simple by coming back in here and saying delete option, save. So now I don't have any variance and I'm going to turn off the inventory, the inventory tracking per variant. So there's there's different types of variants that you can add in here. You can add radio buttons, swatches, rectangle lists, which is what I showed you where they're all all your choices are in a box. And then you can also do a drop down. I'm sure you guys know what pretty much all those are. The swatch is a little bit interesting though because you can put in colors, right? Which is a hex code basically or it'll let you do patterns which is where you can upload an image file that represents that choice so sometimes you may want to show like little cards where you're showing three different images this is this would be how you do it is with swatch and a pattern all right i'm gonna cancel out of that show you the next section which is customization so customizations are like variants except it doesn't force you to have a skew uh, on it and so basically you're you're saying with a modification uh, that you're you're not selling three different types of products you're giving a way to modify the the product that you're adding right so this has a couple extra choices so you have the same swatch radio rectangle and drop down choices but again it's not going to automatically assign a skew for each one of these and it's not going to let you track inventory for each of these because this isn't a different type of product. This is a modification of the product, right? But it's also going to give you a couple other ones, which are pick list, which is the ability to add an, a unit of another product to the cart at the same time. That's particularly interesting. So you're saying, you know, with this can of Coke, add a Snickers bar to it also. So you're selling two SKUs at the same time if you're using pick lists. You can also put in text fields, date fields, numbers only text fields, other multi-line text fields. So that's like a paragraph field. Um, you can put in check boxes and you could do even a file upload. So I'm going to put in a checkbox and I'm just going to call it upgrade and um, give it a field name of yes, right? And you can say it's checked by default or it's not. And if I click save on that, then when I come into the front end, now it gives me a checkbox, which is great. Um, now this is going to show on the cart and it's going to show on the invoice and everything that they've chosen to upgrade. I mean, you know, this is kind of a weird example because I'm just saying you want to upgrade. Maybe you want to say like, uh, you know, add a note to it or something. I don't know, whatever, whatever your upgrade checkbox would be. But here's what's cool is that you know, these modifiers are really just questions of how you want to modify this. So you can say like, you know, maybe, maybe you want to have a text field and the text field would be, uh, you know, gift card text, right? So this would be something that you would write on the item that you're selling in order uh, for them to give it away as a gift. You can come back in here now and say, add a rule and say, if, if somebody chose to upgrade that, Excuse me, just had to cough. If somebody wants to upgrade that or choose that upgrade, then let's add let's add like 12 bucks to the price or let's adjust the weight or let's remove some weight. So you can get all kinds of crazy here with between variations and modifiers. There's just all kinds of stuff that you can do. And um, so that's a little bit about that. I'm going to just delete that out and moving on storefront details so this is where you can put in some search keywords so this is this would be for uh to help it manually populate when somebody uses your search field to look for this item so excuse me a common uh common use of this would be um you know to put in a common misspelling so if people are constantly misspelling things as they're searching for this product you can put a misspelling in here Sort order is something that people don't use very much, but this can affect the order in which um, your products show on your category pages. This only affects the order though, if your category page default sort is set to featured. So it's kind of a, ni a niche <laughs> feature. Uh, don't get 
too crazy uh, in your expectations on this. This would be if you have like a different um, a different product um, template file that you want to apply. I almost never use this because there's so much you can do with stencil if statements that you don't need to do custom templates anymore. Warranty information is a great place to put warranty information. It's also a great place if there's some other type of content that you want on the product page and not an obvious place to put it. A lot of times we as developers will have people put information in into the warranty field because it uh, has very few limitations on what you can put in there. And then we will put it on the page in some other way. So you can get crazy with that. Availability text is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, condition, new, use, refurbish. This is important if you're using uh, um, product feeds on Google. You have to specify that this is a new item. Otherwise, they won't accept it in their, in their input feed. Custom fields is really cool. You can come in here and say... Um, you know, whatever, whatever aspect of this product you want, like USB type, let's say type C, for example. Um, and then this can show up in a couple of different ways. This can show up on the product page and it'll show up here on the cornerstone theme right here, unless you choose to show your custom fields below in which it'll, at which time it'll put it in a tab. Um, the other cool thing about that is um, you can use custom fields to uh, flag products uh, in the faceted search items. So we'll go over that in a different video, but this is where you would put in that information. And really, you can use custom fields for all kinds of stuff. Um, that's just kind of scratching the surface, but this is where you put it in. Related products, this is automatically check mark, checkmarked by default. But you can uncheck it and then specify the exact products that you want to say are related to this one. If you just leave it checked, Big Commerce will just put together some ideas on their own to automatically suggest some additional products at the bottom of your page. So here's where we put in dimensions and weight. This is really only important for if you use real-time shipping calculators because they require you to input the width, height, depth, and weight. Uh, Big Commerce does require you to put in at least a, a fake weight, no matter what. But if you're going to use USPS or UPX shipping calculators, which are optional, then you have to fill in this for every product. This right here is only if you're going to um, specify a fixed shipping price at the product level. So most people don't do this. Most people use site-wide shipping rules to uh, calculate shipping. Know that if you put something in here, it is going to override the site-wide shipping rules. So if you put in $5 for this product and $5 on every other product, then when you go to ship, it's going to just add up all those product product specific prices and your shipping costs may seem very expensive. So I wouldn't mark that or free shipping unless you want that done on a product level. Um, purchasability just means that, you know, it's purchasable right now or it's coming soon. Um, if you just want to use this, uh, your big commerce store as a catalog site, then you could say this can't be purchased in my store. That's just going to remove your add to cart buttons, which is pretty handy if you're trying to build a catalog site. Uh, gift wrapping, some options for that. Customs information is specifically if you're shipping internationally. Your SEO fields are right down here where you can specify the product title. You can change the URL if you want, and you can update the meta description. Um, open graph sharing is uh, just additional data for uh, if you're using open graph all right so that kind of includes all the options now keep in mind you don't have to fill in most of this information the stuff that i showed you at the beginning is the very bare minimum um, but once you fill that in just click save and a product will show up on your site now i told you i was going to show you two different ways to enter products i'm actually going to show you three different ways so this was way number one right and way number two is once you get a product entered what you can do is come in here to products view products and say you have more products to enter that are pretty similar to this so way number two would be to come in here and say duplicate product and so now we have an exact duplicate we need to come in here and give it a unique title so we're going to say product title number two and because this product is going to be very similar to the first product, I'm going to leave the price, I'm going to leave the weight, I'm going to leave the categories, 
I would probably update the description and then come in here and change out the images to whatever this, um, you know, the images for this product are. And then I'm probably good, right? Because maybe I'm entering 100 t-shirts and I just need different pictures for each one. Um, so there you go. So that's way number two. Just duplicate an existing product. Super, super easy. Now, this last one is more complex. But if you have a lot of products that you're trying to enter, this could save you a lot of time. And this is how you do it. You come in here and you enter one product manually which we did right we entered the product title product and i'm going to come in here and go to export and i'm going to choose bulk edit as the template that i'm using and i'm going to click continue and then i'm going to click this link that says export to a csv and then that takes a minute it could take longer if you have a whole bunch of products in here now I do have quite a few products, but we're only going to pay attention to one of those products, which is the one that we just entered. So I'll show you how this works. Oh, here's my whole music. Click download. All right. And now I'm going to just go to my Google Drive and drag this csv that i downloaded into it it figures out that that's a spreadsheet and i'm going to open it up with google sheets obviously if you're using if you're an excel person use excel that's fine all right so i have a whole bunch of stuff in here but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, let's see, what was it called? The product that we installed, product title. I'm going, to, I'm going to find a field called product title. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to make my top row here. I'm going to freeze it. So freeze one row. So that makes this first row sticky as I scroll down, which is nice and handy. And I'm going to just do a Google, I'm going to do a search for product title. So that's going to find it here for me, which is right here. So this line is the one that I, these two lines are the two products that we entered prior. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to just delete everything except for, let's see, how do I, how do I unselect that first one? I'm going to delete everything between this. And I have a ton of products in here. Okay, I'm going to delete everything between those two rows. So now it just gave me the two rows that I have for these two products. And I'm going to add a thousand rows down below. So what this does is it just gives me lots and lots of rows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, create some new product titles. So product title three product title four product title five just like that and i'm going to drag some of these field values down so i'm going to drag this column item type down because that should be the same across all of my products i'm not going to assign a product id to these new products because this is going to be done when i do this import i'm going to drag this p down to say that they're all digital products I'm going to drag this brand down to say that they're all the same brand. I'm going to drag this down. Um, you know, you could put a description in here if you want. You could put a price. I'm going to say these are 22 bucks. This one's 23 bucks. This one's 24 bucks. Uh, I'm going to leave all these blank. Actually, no, I'm going to make all these have $50 retail price, just like that. I'm going to put them on sale. Well, I'm going to put these on sale for 18 bucks, just like that. All right, and you can see basically I'm just figuring out, I'm using the products that I had installed initially manually as a template to um, to put in some more. So I'm gonna say all these weigh one pound, all these have exactly the same options, 
for product width, height, depth, allow purchases, purchase visible, product available, track inventory, current stock low. I'm just using using those first ones here as a template. I'm going to say that they're all in the same category. Actually, no, I'm going to say these other ones are in an apparel category. And watch what happens when I do this. Now, I don't have an apparel category currently. Um, now, product image, I'm going to leave all these product images out because I'm going to manually put those in here. I'm going to just see if there's any other columns with information. There is. I'm going to just take these ones and copy these ones down. I'm going to copy these ones down. You can, you know, look and see what all these are, but um, I'm just I'm going to let it assign the URLs. And come over here, and you can even you can even put like custom fields in here, but maybe we want to put this as value. USB, I don't know what other types of USBs there are. So let's just say USB 3. That was what I picked. And um, there we go. So basically our spreadsheet is complete now. So if I go all the way back over here. So we just copied most of these values. We didn't copy the product ID because we wanted these to be assigned as new products. We put in new names. Uh, we could have put in descriptions if we wanted. Uh, we, we did change the price. And you can see that like if you were doing 100 products, you could just do this all at once and then click download as a CSV. And I'm going to go back in here. And instead of being in the export section, I'm going to go to import. My dog is snoring behind me. I don't know if you guys hear that on the video. It's hilarious. Um, looks like this had some other import happening already. So I'm going to just cancel out of that. And this is what you should see if you arrive here. And so I'm going to choose choose file. Actually, I'm going to just drag my file up to that spot here because that's how Max would like it. Sorry, clicked away too fast. There we go. And you want to choose file was exported using the bulk edit template and then click next. So what that's going to do is it's going to upload the CSV and it's going to, for the products that it saw there that already had product IDs, it's going to treat those as an update. And the products that didn't have product IDs, it's going to treat those as uh, importing those as new products, right? So I just clicked import and it says, Five were imported, but two of them were just updated. So those were the two that I left on there, the ones that we had created to have the ID, but a total of five came in all together. So now if I go to products view, look at that. You see product five, product title four, product title three, just like that. And you see that they came into the apparel category. And so when I told them that that came into the product the product category called apparel, it looked and saw there wasn't a category called apparel. And so it created one and automatically put those three into it. So you can get fancier. You can put products into multiple categories at once. You can put multiple product uh, custom fields on them at once. You can do all kinds of things. But long story short, what you want to do if you want to do this import export method to create a whole bunch of products at once is create a product or two to use as a template then do the export, then augment the CSV, and then re-import it just like that. Um, so what I would do now if these were my real products, because I didn't import images as part of this, which I could have, is just be a little bit more complicated than what I was planning to go through in this video. But because I didn't import images, you can see that none of these have images. So I would just click into each one of these now and manually load my images, and then I'd be good. So that's a couple different ways to import products. Uh, if you found that helpful, hit the like button. Hopefully this wasn't too long for you guys. I just kind of wanted to show you the options. I've seen a lot of people, you know, manually import, I don't know how many, how many products and then realize I could have done all of this with a CSV. And I've also had people try it with a CSV and realize, you know, maybe I should have just done them one at a time because 
you know, it wasn't going to be that hard anyway. So hit the like button if you found this helpful. Be sure to join our free community of store owners, which you can find at joinecommercegrowth.com. And if you're looking for a dev team for your store, reach out to us at Epic Design Labs. I'm always looking for new ways to help you guys out. So if there's something else that you guys are stuck on or something that you want to know about big commerce, leave me a comment below and I'd love to maybe make that my next video. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.